Welcome to a video on learning Twine. This video is an extended example of hooks in Harlow and style markup in Harlow. Let's look at the presentation. We see here initially text at the top reading timer paused, a horizontal rule, text over on the side enter room, and then another horizontal rule and quickly find all the keys to find them. If we enter the room, we see at the top center text, at the bottom center text, but in the middle two columns. Search areas are cabinet, desk, and carpet. Let's look in the cabinet. We see a locked box with a number one on it. Well, while we were looking, we now have 84, 83 seconds remaining. We can also reset. Let's go ahead and reset. Reset puts us back at the beginning. Let's enter the room again. And we'll go back to the cabinet one more time. Within a cabinet, we see a locked box with the number one on it. Well, that doesn't really help us. Let's go to look at the desk. See a center drawer, a small box with number two on it. Okay. Let's go look at the cat carpet here. We see four different options. Let's pull up the northwest corner, northeast, southeast, southwest. Ah, a key with a number one on it. Well, we saw a box in the cabinet that needed a key with a one. Let's back to the cabinet. Oh, now we can unlock box with number one on it. And notice we have one key in our inventory. And now we have a key with a number two on it. Well, that was on the desk. Now we have one key and two key. Center drawer. Unlock two. Key with number three. Well, now we'll finally we can leave the room. So let's do that. We escaped the room. And the timer is paused. Let's close this. I'll reset it. Let's come back to the story map view. In the story map view, our story here starts with a start passage. The start passage sets up initial values using the set macro timer to 89, has key 1, has key 2, has key 3, all to false, start timer to false, and left room to false. We're also escaping all of this text text so that it does not take up white space within our story. We saw that at the very beginning. We don't see anything else. We just see into room, which is why we're here. All of this has been escaped and any white space it would have taken up are no longer being taken up. So we're set up all of these initial values into room goes to room passage. Let's look at that. Room passage starts with the same way initial escaped use of a set macro start timer to true. Then we see the first use of a column markup in Harlow. Column markup extends from whenever it first appears to whenever the next column markup appears. So this is left as we saw. Search area is to the left. The next part is to the right and we see column markup for right column display inventory display passage with the name inventory which we'll look at momentarily and then we see the end this stops any additional column markup and switches it back to the default so we have left right and then stop well let's close passage editor for room and go look at the passage inventory inventory has three uses of if macro if has key is one, if has key one is true, we show within its hook one key. If has key two is true, we show two key within its hook. If has key three is true, we show three key within its hook. Each of these affecting their hooks here. Use of the if macro, checking conditional. If we have this key, we show it. If we have this key, we show that one. And finally, if we have key three, we show three key. Coming back to room, we saw that. Search areas, one, two, three, and inventory, because we don't have any keys yet, don't show any of our keys. Room points to cabinet, desk, and carpet. If we were to look into any of these, including the current room passage we were just looking at, we would see none of them contain the timer. Yet, as we saw, pulling back up the passage room, we're starting the timer. Start timer to true. Well, where is the timer? 
the timer is in a passage with a header tag. It's over here. Passage name header has a header tag. In Harlow, passages with the header tag are part of the header. That is, they are run before the content of other passages. So we're running header, the passage of some content, or the content of some passage, that is, and then finally footer. So header, content, footer. In this case, we're now using, instead of column markup, alignment markup. We saw that same effect. These are aligned to center. Then again, we're escaping all of this. Then we're using a horizontal rule, three hyphens in Harlow, and we're going back to left justified, or left to the side. So we align to the center, then we align back to left, that is, set it back to default. Within this, if start timer is true, which we set when we entered the room, then we go ahead and use, or right here, the live macro to repeat every one second. Within this, we are decreasing the value of timer by one each loop, so we're counting down. Then, if timer is ever zero, we're stopping it using the stop macro, showing the text times up, setting start timer to false so timer is no longer going, and then we're going to the bad ending if the timer has run out and we didn't escape the room. If the timer is still running, so timer is not equal to zero, we're showing we have how many seconds left, and we're supplying a reset link, which we used when we ran through this. We set start timer to false, we go back to the start passage, reinitialize the values, and we can re-enter the room and restart the timer safely here. Otherwise, as we saw, show timer paused. And timer's paused because we haven't actually started searching yet. So that's set up in the header passage with a header tag. In the footer passage, it also has a footer tag. As I reviewed here, passages tagged with header go first, then whatever content of a passage, and then whatever passages are tagged with footer. In this case, we see the same thing. Alignment to center, horizontal rule. Alignment to center, horizontal rule. And we see if we've left the room or not. If we left the room, then there's no reason to check if we have the keys or not, and we can just skip and show no content. However, if we haven't left the room, we are still looking for the keys, and we check here. Do we have key one, key two, key three? If we have all of them, show a link to leave the room set start timer to false, we don't want the timer to run anymore, and we can go to the good ending. Otherwise, show quickly find all the keys. Quickly find all the keys. Closing this passage then, we can come back to room. So when we initially get to room, we start the timer, and then when we click out to cabinet, desk, or carpet, the timer starts running in the header. Looking at the passage, looking at the content of the passage cabinet, we see same thing, left column, right column, break columns, escape all of the code within it. If we have key two, then there's no reason to look anymore. Otherwise, if we happen to have key one, we can unlock the box, or if we don't have either of them, we just show a locked box with a number one on it. Same with the passage desk, column, left column, right column, start, stop columns, escape all of the text within this. If we have key three, the desk holds nothing of interest for us. Otherwise, we can open the center drawer. If we have key two, we can unlock it. If we don't, then we just see a small box with number two. The same finally with carpet. Same setup, left column, right column, break columns, escape all of the code. If we have key one, there's no reason to search anymore. If we don't, we can pull up each corner. If we pull up the southwest corner, we see a key with a number one on it, and we set has key one to true, because now we have it. Because this code is escape right here, all of its white space and all of its display, any of these passage links, would be all run together. To prevent that, we're including the break rule here, BR, at the end of all of these, to put an extra line break at the end. 
So this is shown on one line, break. This is shown on one line, break. Otherwise, we wouldn't need this normally, but because all of this code is, is escaped to reduce the white space, we have to introduce additional HTML elements to work on our styling here. So finally, there are two extra passages I haven't looked at yet. If we get all of the keys, as we did when we ran through them, we get the good ending. If we don't and the timer runs out, we get the bad ending. Let's start with the bad ending. So it says we didn't escape in time, and we set left room to true. We're setting left room to true here because the content of a passage is run before anything that has the tag footer. So we can set a value here, then right after that, in the footer, if left room is true, we don't show anything. So otherwise, once we've left the room, we've got all the keys and we've left a room, we don't want to leave the room again if we've already left. That's kind of confusing. So we can set it here in this passage, then the footer will be run afterwards, and so we can safely do that. So if we look at the good ending, we see the same thing. You escape the room, and we're setting left room to true, knowing that the footer will be run right after that, and so we won't show any text. And we saw that when we found all of the keys, we didn't see any text here at the bottom anymore. This has been an extended example of looking at hooks in Harlow, multiple uses of if macros to check different conditionals to see if we have keys in different places. It's also been a review of the different style markup options in Harlow, looking at columns, alignment, horizontal rules, and combinations of all of these together to create a complex example of an escape room. A link to this example code can be found in the YouTube description of this video, along with a proof copy of all of the code for reviewing if, if you don't want to import the example. Thanks for watching.